Number one, it bears repeating. Whole grains are not health foods. Let me tell you a story from yesterday. Yesterday, I got a new patient who's actually the head of a, a big supplement selling company. And this gentleman was referred to me because in his early 50s now, uh, he's had not only coronary bypass, but also uh, a couple of stents. In fact, he's scheduled for one next week. And people in my circle suggested that he might want to see me to see what was up. Well, this gentleman is uh, thin, and he's absolutely perplexed, as, and he, of course, is in the health supplement business, and so he's really healthy. Uh, one problem, he has a hemoglobin A1C, which you've seen on TV every day. I got my A1C down, uh, of 6.1. Now, there are many of us who consider 6.0 and above as diabetes. If you don't like that, then it's pre-diabetes. And like I tell my patients, telling you you're a pre-diabetic is like telling a female she's a little bit pregnant. And as we know, that's impossible. So here's a guy who's healthy as a horse, eats healthy, and yet he's a diabetic. So we started talking about what he eats. He said, well, ever since I got my diagnosis uh, of heart disease, I gave up milk and I've changed over to uh, oat milk. And I have about three glasses of oat milk every day because it's so healthy for me. And I go, well, you know, do you just drink the oat milk? He said, oh no, I pour it on my organic granola every morning and have that as my breakfast. Why is he a diabetic? Well, number one, as I've talked about before, uh, oat milk may be one of the most poisonous beverages you can put in your mouth for reasons I've mentioned before, but it is a whole grain. Oats contain a protein that cross-reacts with gluten, and gluten, as you know, is that mischievous lectin in wheat rye, barley, and oats. And that healthy granola is made from whole grains, notably lots of oats. And you probably know that Consumer Reports tested multiple oat products in the United States and found that all of them contained high levels of glyphosate, including several organic granola products. Top that off with the fact that it's basically a giant sugar bomb. So imagine that his whole grain breakfast, his whole grain oat milk, is one of the reasons that he's now seeing me for heart disease. Please, there is no truth to the fact that whole grains are good for you. Now, remember, a lot of these studies were done in mice and rats. And guess what? Mice and rats eat grains. That's uh, what they like. And they have a completely different system of enzymes that break down the proteins like gluten and the other lectins in grains like wheat germagglutinin that we don't have. So taking a mouse study and giving them whole grains and saying, hey, they do really good, you should too, has nothing to do with whole grain goodness for you. Recently, people have gone, well, I'm not into whole grains, I'm into pseudo grains like quinoa. And everybody knows how good quinoa is because the Ant Aztecs ate quinoa. Well, yes, the Aztecs did eat quinoa, but what most people don't know is the Aztecs knew how bad quinoa was for them, that they actually fermented their quinoa. They let it rot so that the digestion of the lectins in quinoa, and it's loaded with lectins, was accomplished by the bacteria. And only then they cooked their quinoa. And it's not on the package directions. The same way with corn, Central American Indians, have been eating corn for 10,000 years, and look how healthy they were. Not so fast. We know that traditionally, 
corn was always soaked in lime juice to break the hull of corn and turn it into hominy. Hominy, in turn, had the niacin in corn bound so that it was not lost, and it became safe because you removed the hull where most of the problem is. That, in turn, was ground into grits and flour, harissa flour, and masa harissa was the only way tortillas was made in the good old days. Now, unfortunately, Cortez and the other Spaniards did not know this. Columbus did not know this. And so they brought corn back to the old world intact. And as I've talked about before, it grew very well in Upper Italy near Milan, and they changed to a corn culture. And for several generations, they gave birth to mentally retarded children with very small brains. They were called Cretans, Cretanism. And it was directly related to the corn consumption that had not been treated with lye. In fact, to this day, the eating of corn is banned in France, because France abutted Italy, and they saw the dire consequences. And in France, corn is fed to pigs, not to people. So whole grain goodness is the worst thing for you. Now, there's plenty of healthy alternatives. Sorghum and millet don't have a hull. So you're perfectly safe using sorghum and millet flowers, sorghum, and millet as an alternative to oatmeal. Uh, they're perfectly safe. You can get pop sorghum, which tastes exactly like popcorn. So lots of great ways to get your whole seed goodness without the grains. All right, number two, artificial sweeteners. The truth is some of the most popular sugar alternatives out there can be even worse for your health than sugar. Saccharin, aspartame, sucralose, these are poison. You might better know them by their brand names, Sweet and Low, Equal, and Splenda. These all kill gut bacteria. In fact, one Duke study from a number of years ago showed that one packet of Splenda, sucralose, can kill off 50% of your gut bacteria. They actually promote weight gain by fooling your brain that you have actually had sugar. And then when sugar doesn't arrive in your brain, your brain goes, wait a minute, I know you tasted sugar. I tasted it. It didn't arrive. You got cheated. Go back and find some more. And when I was a Diet Coke addict, drinking eight Diet Cokes a day and 70 pounds overweight, I knew that. I was constantly hungry. And the more Diet Coke I ate, the fatter I got and the hungrier I got because my brain kept getting fooled. Now, luckily, there's some really good natural alternatives. My favorite, as you probably know, is allulose. Allulose is a true rare sugar, but it has not only no calories, but it has the additional benefit that it is a prebiotic fiber. So it actually feeds good gut bacteria. And there's several studies that show allulose actually lowers your blood sugar. So it's a win-win. Monk fruit is also a very useful sweetener. It's not a prebiotic fiber, but it also will not kill off your gut bacteria. But allulose is a win-win. No calories, feeds friendly bacteria, lowers your blood sugar. And that's why I actually now make allulose at Gundry MD. And you'll see it appearing in a lot of Gundry MD food products for that reason. Number three, soy and soy products. You know, soy is getting more and more and more popular in plant-based diets. But I'm going to put on my uh, Loma Linda professor hat and take you back to Loma Linda University Medical School. The Adventists uh, use as one of their main meat substitutes uh, what's called texturized vegetable protein. 
TVP. Now, TVP is fascinating. It is soy that has been heated, defatted, and pressurized to produce this meat-like byproduct. And those clever Adventists have taken away two of the biggest problems with soy. Number one, they've taken soy oil, which is a really nasty omega-6 fat, and taking it out of soy. Number two, with pressure and heat, they've destroyed the really nasty lectins in soy. And so TVP is actually a remarkably safe meat alternative, all thanks to the Adventists. The problem is that most soy foods have not had that done. So soy milk, tofu, veggie burgers, these are loaded with omega short-chain omega-6 fats, and they're loaded with lectins, and they're even loaded with phytoestrogens, which can become estrogen disruptors, endocrine disruptors. That's probably not a good thing. Soy and these endocrine disruptors actually tells your body to store fat. Soy also contains goitrogens. Now, those are compounds that actually suppress thyroid function. And a number of my vegan patients who depend on their soy foods, their tofu, their veggie burgers, have suppressed thyroid function. And when we get those products away from them, then their thyroid returns to normal. The same way with these new exciting burger alternatives like Beyond Meat and Impossible Burger. There are two meat alternatives that are made from soy. So that healthy Impossible Burger you ordered through the drive-thru may be just as bad as the meat burger you were replacing. In fact, in many ways, it may actually be worse for you. So be cautious when approaching soy. Number four, store-bought salad dressings. Now, you think you're doing yourself a favor by having a salad for lunch. Not so fast. If you're using store-bought salad dressing, chances are you're just as better off having French fries instead. Why? Most store-bought salad dressings are loaded with hidden sugars, unhealthy fats. They're made from these corn oils, soybean oil, cottonseed oil. They are omega-6 short-chain fatty acids, linoleic acid, which is really, really bad for you. And we've talked about the dangers of short-chain omega-6 fats, but there they are swimming around in your salad dressing. Other oils use sunflower oil, peanut oil. Again, all you're getting is a massive dose, not only of omega-6 fats, but all of these oils contain health-destroying lectins. Now, don't get me wrong, salads are incredibly good for you. You simply need to make your own salad dressings at home, and it's super easy to do. You know, I personally love to mix olive oil and balsamic vinegar or apple cider vinegar or champagne vinegar. You name the vinegar, it's going to go a long way to help your health, along with the benefits of the polyphenols and olive oil. As I've written about in Unlocking the Keto Code in my upcoming book, Gut Check, vinegars are really one of the best ways to give your gut buddies the precursors they need to make this all-important short-chain fatty acid called butyrate or butyric acid. So you can't go wrong, and it's so easy. Now, I have a ton of salad dressing recipes right here on my YouTube channel, and in all my books. I have everything from creamy ranch dressing to tangy vinaigrettes. So there's no reason to ever waste money on store-bought dressing again. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. This is organic green bananas. You've heard me talk about the benefit of green bananas, and now it's available in a pasta. The great thing about this is it's loaded with dietary fiber, 